Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at two polynomials. So this problem is asking you to simplify this expression. It doesn't tell you what polynomials, that these are polynomials. But uh, what is intended here is to be able to simplify this and come up with a polynomial at the end. So in other words, ax to the fifth plus bx to the fourth plus one is divisible by x squared minus 2x plus 1, and we're going to go ahead and simplify this expression. But we're also going to find the a and b values. So how do you do that? I'll be presenting two methods, even though the first method is going to be a little bit painful, but I think it's going to be very helpful if you're dealing with polynomials in general, algebra, and stuff like that. So let's start with the first method. So for my first method, since this expression is simplifiable, I don't know if that's a word, but if this can be simplified and reduced, that means uh, we, we get an answer as a cubic, right? So I'm thinking, hey, if you're able to divide this by, let's say, x squared minus 2x plus 1, then the answer should look like this. And you hopefully will agree with me on that x cubed because I need to get x, ax to the fifth when I multiply by x squared. So it's kind of like a conclusion uh, or um, the result that comes from long division. Anyways, uh, we'll talk about that as well. Th third method could be long division, but it takes a long time. That's why I'm going to avoid it. Anyways, then I'll continue with cx squared because b was used. And then uh, I have a dx. And then finally, I'm going to end up with an e normally, but one and one tells me or tell me that the constant should be 1, because 1 times 1 equals 1. It's, it's as easy as that, right? As easy as that. Now, what do you think we should do next? If you said cross multiplication, you got it right. Let's go ahead and cross multiply these two things. Um, it's kind of time consuming, but you know, it's not super bad. So let's go ahead and write it like this. Obviously, we're going to com uh, combine like terms. At the end, we're going to set it equal to the numerator. Let's go ahead and distribute. Some terms are going to cancel out. ax to the fifth minus 2ax to the fourth plus ax cubed. A I'm done with one fourth. And then plus cx to the fourth minus 2cx cubed plus cx squared plus dx cubed minus 2dx squared plus dx. It's not going to fit, so I'm going to write it at the bottom. Plus x squared. Let me go ahead and align these minus 2x, whatever, I'm just going to write it, plus 1. Okay, cool, cool. At the end, I just multiply by 1, so that's what I get. So let's go ahead and simplify this by combining like terms. So which terms are like terms? First of all, this one is going to be by itself because that's the highest power, ax to the fifth. And then I have the fourth powers. Let's go ahead and take a look at x to the fourth, c minus 2a. That's going to be the coefficient of x to the fourth. And then I should have x cubed, but we do, we do have quite a few. So let's see. We have a, we have plus d, and then minus 2c. 2c, or not 2c, that, that just didn't work. Anyways, I should have picked b for that one. And then I have an x squared. What is that? It is, you see, underlining helps. cx squared minus 2d, so that's c, and there's a 1. So it's kind of like c minus 2d plus 1, however you want to write it. And I should have an x that is just dx minus 2x, so that's going to be d minus 2 quantity x. And at the end, I have 1 by itself, because that's what it's supposed to be, because we only have a single constant here. Make sense? Now, i got to set this equal to my numerator, which is ax to the fifth plus bx to the fourth plus 1. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the equality of two polynomials. What is that supposed to mean? First of all, these two cancel out, so we can totally forget about them. The ones cancel out, we can to totally forget about the constants and focus on everything else. But guess what? A lot of terms should cancel out because I don't have x cubed, I don't have x squared. So the coefficient of uh, x to the fourth, though, is b here. So c minus 2a should equal b. Good, that's one equation. And another equation is going to come from here. Since there is no x cubed here, the coefficient of x cubed should be 0. The coefficient of x squared should be 0 because there is no x squared either, right? So let's go ahead and set them equal to 0. a plus d minus 2z is equal to 0. 2c, I mean. 
and then c minus 2d plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's take a look. We have a, b, c, and d. Four variables, what, but three equations, right? So how can we find um, all of them from here, right? So that's going to be, okay, I think uh, there's one thing we didn't check. Yes, I knew that. Another equation, we do need four equations. The coefficient of x. There is no x term either, so d minus 2 should be 0. And that's actually really good because it gives us the value of d and pretty much every, everything else collapses from there. If d is 2, I can go ahead and replace d with 2 here. c minus 4 plus 1 is 0, which means c is equal to 3, right? And then if c is equal to 3 and d is 2, I can kind of replace them here, d and 3, that gives me a plus 2 minus 6 is equal to 0, which means a is equal to 4. And finally, uh, I have the value of c, which is 3, and I have a equals 4, so b is 3 minus 8, and b is negative 5. Awesome, we got all the values, and now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. So I have ax to the fifth plus bx to the fourth plus 1, divided by x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to, and I assumed a four, something on the form ax cubed plus cx squared, so that's going to be 4x cubed plus 3x squared, and then I have the cx and the d, so it's going to be 3x plus 2. That is the answer, and we're pretty much done, but let's go ahead and replace the a with what it is and write this in a nicer form, 4x to the fifth plus, oops, that's a minus sign, minus 5x to the fourth plus 1 divided by this number, and that gives me this polynomial. If you don't believe that, go ahead and do the long division or use Wolfram Alpha, which is a lot easier, and you'll get the answer, which is, I think, amazing, right? Okay, it's brute forcey, but it's cool. Sort of. Okay, let's take a look at the second method. I'm pretty sure you'll appreciate this more. And it kind of uses the idea of derivatives, which is really cool. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but this basically means we have a perfect square at the bottom, right? Because x squared minus 2x plus 1 can be written as perfect square. Now, if the bottom divides the top, in other words, if x minus 1 squ squared is a factor and there's no remainder because this is supposed to simplify, then I can kind of write it like this, x minus 1 quantity squared multiplied by some unknown quotient we don't care about. Okay, we don't care about quotients here because uh, we can just make them disappear. Hocus pocus, abracadabra. What do you see? x equals 1 is going to do the job, right? So I'll replace x with 1 on both sides, a plus b plus 1 is equal to 0. Yay, a plus b is equal to negative 1. Awesome. But I do need another equation, and derivative comes to the rescue. Because this is a perfect square, there's a theorem that says if you are dividing a polynomial by something squared, you can use the derivatives. And here's the reason for that. Differentiate both sides, and you're going to get the following. This is going to be the co uh, product rule, the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of q. We don't care about that either, times the first. But what we care about is we still get x minus 1 as a factor, which is really cool because we can replace x equals 1 again. This time we get 5a plus 4b equals 0 because 0 plus 0. Yay! a plus b is negative 1. Oh, how can I use this? Multiply this by 4. 4a plus 4b is negative 4. But 5a plus 4b is just one more a. Add to both sides. Set it equal to 0. I hope this makes sense. a is equal to 4. b is equal to negative 5. And guess what? That gives you the exact same answer that we got before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.